Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and after a lengthy hiatus, we're back with another random episode challenge video. If you haven't seen any of the series before, this is the basics on how it works. We use a random number generator to select an episode of the anime and then take the first six Pokemon shown and use them to take on the toughest trainer in a given game. We match levels, use a set battle style and aren't allowed items for the face off so things can get pretty difficult with weaker teams. There are a few additional stipulations but we'll get to them when they come up. We're in Pokemon White today to battle against Alder, so I set the random number generator to pick something between 1 and 142. That's how many episodes of the Best Wishes series there are, so we'll be using a 5th gen Pokemon episode today. The number that came out was 30, and that corresponds with a UFO for LGM. That's a pretty early episode, and the earlier on in the series, the tougher it usually is, so this could be a difficult one. Alright, let's get into it and find out who we'll be using. On a peaceful night outside of Nimbasa City, Silent, Iris, and Ash are awoken by a loud noise. After failing to practice good hygiene, the Pokemon protagonist is almost blinded by the bright light of an apparent UFO. Although we get a look at both Pikachu and Axew in this sequence, they won't be in our team. Fairly early on after consulting the viewers, I decided to rule out Pokemon who were always on hand so Ash's Pikachu and Iris's Axew are both off limits. Ash thinks that 5G is responsible for the strange sight in the sky but Silent isn't quite convinced. That has a very unscientific aroma to it. The trio wait till morning and then head to a quiet diner in town. They are informed that they're actually in Area 28 and of course Ash has never heard of it. Not only is he unsure of where Area 28 is, but he also seems blissfully unaware of what it is. Uh, what's an Area 28? The owner tells the group of the oddball scientist Professor Icarus who researches UFOs for a living and of the strange happenings near his house. Everyone that's been out to visit him recently has had terrible shooting pains in their heads and visions of space. In spite of this, Ash and friends hit the road and head straight for the professor's home. While crossing a rickety rope bridge, they all have a premonition of Ash falling through a broken plank and are able to stop it from happening. Although now that they've avoided death, I'm pretty sure that it's going to start hunting them. I think that's how this works. We get to see the source of the vision and unsurprisingly it's the episode's titular Pokemon, Elgium. The Psychic type will be the first member of our team and with a base stat total of 385, it's not the worst thing in the world. The Cerebral Pokemon is incredibly slow but makes up for it pretty well with a very decent base special attack stat of 85. Any positive that comes with LGM is significantly outweighed by the issues though. Five of Alder's six team members have super effective attacks to use against the Extraterrestrial and none of them are weak to Psychic type moves. Alder's six Pokemon have an average base stat total of just over 508, so although LGM's 385 is respectable, we're gonna need some heavy hitters if we're gonna compete. Getting back to the episode, Team Rocket had their sights set on LGM, but even though Meowth's on screen here, he's another Pokemon who's always on hand, so we have to skip him too. Having survived their encounter with a 2x4, Ash, Iris, and Silent reach Icarus' home, and when he comes to the door, they get to talking. Silent mentions the potential UFO they spotted the night before and asks about the professor's research. Eventually, they reach the topic of Dark Matter. Dark Matter? Is that some kind of Pokemon? Oh my god. After some choice brown nosing from Silent, Icarus invites them inside to discuss the UFO further. Once inside, everyone has another premonition, this time of an explosion. The professor sprints away to an underground laboratory and the group follow him without asking. Everything appears to be malfunctioning and when they ask how to help, Icarus instructs them to remove the large cable connected to his custom-built flying saucer. They are ultimately useless with LGM having to do the whole job, but everything's okay and nothing exploded, so I guess that's the main thing. Ash, Silent, and Iris then catch a glimpse of the mysterious Pokemon who helped them, and I think we can all agree that LGM is one of the most adorable Pokemon ever. Just look at it. The professor then recounts his history with LGM, which involved him injuring the psychic type with a mini flying saucer that he'd built. When Icarus brought LGM back home to nurse it back to health, it was shy, but they became fast friends. After spending some time together, LGM started causing the professor to have visions of space. The UFO researcher took this to mean that LGM had arrived from outer space and set his sights on returning his friend home. That's the reason for Icarus's intense focus on building a ship that can take the duo out beyond the Earth's atmosphere. After finishing his story, there's a knock at the door and, of course, it's the vaguely disguised Team Rocket returning to capture the curious creature. Jesse deploys a device that ties everyone up with electric ropes and then throws down a second gadget that binds LGM. I don't think I'll ever truly understand who's funding this sect of Team Rocket. They seem to have unending funds, but they don't ever accomplish… anything. 
Anyway, as they fly away with their new captive, Silo manages to lose a Pokeball that slowly rolls and releases Dwebble. The Hermit Crab will be the second member of our team, and with a base stat total of 325, we fall even further behind Alder's team. The Bug and Rock type is at least a much better type matchup for our face-off with Unova's champion, having stab super effective moves against half of his team. Unfortunately, Alder's team is split down the middle on physical and special attackers, and the three Pokemon that Dwebble can deal damage against are all special attackers. That really doesn't work in our favour with the Bug's 85 base defence and 35 base special defence. We've still got 14 members to go though, so we're not done yet. Back in the episode, Dwebble uses X Scissor to smash the device binding Ash, Iris, Silent, and Icarus, freeing them to give chase. They load into the Professor's Flying Saucer and take to the sky. I'm not entirely sure flying with a guy named Icarus is a great idea historically, but the leading trio are really intent on helping to save Elgium. As they catch up to Team Rocket, a battle ensues with Jesse sending out Wubat to start things off. That'll be our third Pokemon, and as another Psychic type, Wubat brings a lot of the same problems that LGM presents. On the positive side of things, two of Alder's team are weak to flying type moves, but with that we also have an additional weakness to his Vanillux. Wubat also has the lowest base stat total of any Pokemon we've seen so far, so we're only falling further behind with every new addition. On the other side of the battlefield in the sky, Ash sends out Tranquil to counter the bat. The Wild Pigeon Pokemon takes our team up to 4, giving us some nice resistances and bringing our average base stat total up a small bit. We're still under 350 on average though, and with Alder north of 500 we could really do with a couple of strong Pokemon to round out the team. When Tranquil's Gust blows away Wubat, James calls out Yamask to level the playing field? The Ghost makes 5 for us, but does absolutely nothing to solve our numerous issues. At 303, Yamask has the lowest base stat total of any Pokemon on our team, taking our average even further from Alder's. Although Ghost-type Pokemon can often be pretty evasive, all of Alder's team can hit Yamask with at least regularly effective moves. The Spirit Pokemon does have some pretty decent defenses, so maybe we can find a way to take advantage of that. The Shadow Ball that Yamask fires off cuts down Tranquil before Axew counters the Dragon Rage, leaving Team Rocket wide open. Silent sends out Pansage, whose Bullet Seed frees LGM, and with that we filled out our team, with one of the Elemental Monkeys. The champion has 5 Pokemon who can deal super effective damage against the Grass type, with 4 of those 5 attackers being able to hit with stab moves. Not only is it a pretty hopeless typing, but a fairly pathetic base stat total of 316 only brings one positive. It takes our team's collective total to exactly 2000, which is a satisfyingly round number. Alder's total is 3,050 though, so we are a seriously long way behind. If we added an Espeon and a Lucario and went in with a team of 8, we'd be all tied up though, so that's nice at least. Now that LGM's back on the right ship, Pikachu can send Team Rocket packing, but before they go, Yamask's Nightshade causes a malfunction. As the engines fail on the Flying Saucer, it plummets into a canyon only for Buzz Lightyear to save the day. Once everyone is safely on the ground, Icarus reiterates his intention to return LGM home, only for the Psychic type to send everyone visions of the two together. Silent deduces that LGM wants to stay with the Professor, and as nobody can actually understand what the light patterns mean, we just have to hope he's right. Ash, Iris, and Silent get back on the road to Nimbasa, and that's the episode. We've got our team, and it's a pretty questionable one, but it's definitely going to be a challenge, and that's the whole point of the series. LGM, Dwebble, Wubat, Tranquil, Yamask, and Pansage aren't exactly an incredible group, but it's a pretty fun and unique team. For our first random episode challenge in Unova, we're going to be using a full team of Gen 5 Pokemon, which is exactly what I wanted. Alder's team of Excelgore, Bufalant, Drudigan, Vanillux, Escavalier, and Volcarona are all at level 75, except for the Sun Pokemon who's 77, so that's where our levels need to be. We're going to have to come up with some interesting movesets because we are at a massive disadvantage in this one. Let's get into the game and check out our team. Up first we've got Hermy the Dwebel who's at level 75 with the moves X Scissor, Stealth Rock, Earthquake and Rock Wrecker. Elysium the Elgium second in line also at 75 and she's equipped with Psychic, Attract, Hidden Power and Thunderbolt. That Hidden Power is Fire type and it's probably going to be key in taking down Alders as Cavalier. Nightwing the Woobat's up next, also at 75, and she's got Psychic, Attract, Endeavor, and Air Slash. I know we've doubled up on Attract now, but with how weak our team is in comparison to Alders, I think we're going to need some cheap moves. Kilo the Tranquil's our 4th level 75, and his moveset's made up of Quick Attack, U-Turn, Fly, and Return. 
Second to last, we've got Son of the Yamask, who's our final level 75, and I've gone seriously defensive on this one. Our only attack is Nightshade, and that's backed up by Will-O-Wisp, Swagger, and Destiny Bond. I truly have no idea of how this battle will play out, so my movesets are a little bit all over the place. Finally, we've got Tarragon the Pansage, our soul level 77, who's got Seed Bomb, Leech Seed, Toxic, and Low Kick. I really had no idea how to deal with Buffalon, so I added Low Kick in case we need it. Alright, let's give this a try. Alder leads off with Excelgore, and we send in Dwebble first. We call for Hermie to use Stealth Rock, and Alder tells his bug to use me first. As we haven't selected a damage dealing move, it fails, and we're allowed to get off a free Stealth Rock to start. With Jagged Stones now covering Alder's side of the battlefield, Dwebble goes for a Rock Wrecker, but this time Excelgore's me first pays off. The bug strikes quickly with a powered up Rock Wrecker that would have blown Dwebble away if it weren't for Sturdy. The ability just about keeps Hermie standing so he can fire off a Rock Wrecker of his own that takes down Excelgore, giving us the early advantage. That went about as well as possible with Dwebble setting up Stealth Rock and scoring the knockout. Alder sends in Buffalon who stumbles around on the pointed stones before thundering into the recharging Dwebble with Head Charge. Shockingly, his single hit point doesn't hold strong and the battle is quickly leveled up. We send in Pan Save second and call for Low Kick, but it only hits at 80 base power. For some reason, Buffalon weighs less than Pokemon like Beldum, Mudbray, and Donphan. Despite being based on a buffalo, the normal type weighs just over 200 pounds. That's incredibly inconvenient for us as it means Low Kick is a long way from knocking him out. Buffalon counters with Megahorn, which absolutely obliterates Tarragon, giving Alder the lead. We call on Tranquil next, hoping a speedy return will be enough to take down the weakened Buffalon. The attack leaves the Bash Buffalo deep in red health, allowing him to hit back with Stone Edge. Kilo dodges the super effective blast and counters with Return, but Alder stops the incoming knockout with a full restore. Return takes Buffalon back into red health, but this time Kilo isn't quick enough to dodge the retaliatory Stone Edge. The flying type is pummeled by rocks knocking her out of the sky and giving the Unova Champion a big advantage. We send in Nightwing, really hoping that this time speed will be enough. Striking fast with Psychic, Wubat finishes off the severely injured Buffalon, reducing our deficit to 1. Vanillix is up next for Alder, but he's badly damaged by the Stealth Hearts on entry. We call for Nightwing to use Attract, which is probably our only real chance here. That immobilizes the double scoop for a turn, so Wubat can attack with Psychic. After recovering from the blast of Psychic Energy, the Ice-type sends a Blizzard towards Nightwing, but she skillfully dodges the Icy Gust. Another Psychic leaves Vanillix in red health before Wubat's forced to dodge another Blizzard. She does so with Grace, then finishes off the Snowstorm Pokemon with one final Psychic. That seemed like an incredibly unlikely victory, but Nightwing got us over the line to tie the battle up at 3-3. Alder sends in Escavalier next, but with a set battle style I really don't want to burn a turn switching. So we stay in with Wubat and call for Attract once again. Escavalier is prevented from attacking by Infatuation, which allows Nightwing to strike with Air Slash, causing the Cavalry Pokemon to flinch. I think Wubat might be unstoppable. The Steel Bug's hit by another Air Slash, and somehow the earlier attract hands us another free turn. Nightwing's allowed to attack once more, but Escavalier just managed to live through the hit. Instead of doing anything to counter though, he's immobilized again, so one final Air Slash can finish him off. I'm not entirely sure how, but Wubat has just brushed off Vanillix and Escavalier without being touched. Alder calls on his Volcarona next, and this is where the Stealth Rocks really pay off. The Champion's Ace is sliced up by the Jagged Stones, wiping out half of his HP before Nightwing is even attacked. I took some time deciding between Attract and Air Slash before eventually settling on the Flying-type attack. Volcarona is left with almost no hit points remaining, but almost none isn't good enough. The Sun Pokemon fires off a Hyper Beam that decimates Wubat, taking her out after an unbelievable run. Having thought it over for a while, we call on Yamask next, and with Volcarona recharging, an easy Nightshade takes Alder down to 1. Drudigan's up last, and without a Rock Weakness, he's not too badly damaged by the stones. I really couldn't decide what move to go for here, but ultimately settled on Will-O-Wisp. The Dragon attacks with Outrage, badly hurting Yamask, but the Ghost can definitely live another hit. That means it's too early for Destiny Bond, so we go for Nightshade instead. Drudigan's burn really weakens Outrage, and Yamask takes the dragon below half health. After two blows, Outrage comes to a close, leaving Alder's final Pokemon confused, and we call for Sunoff to attack with Nightshade yet again. 
The cave dweller hits himself in confusion, which means one final nightshade knocks him out, handing us the win. Somehow, we defeated Alder without even using our strongest team member. We were using a UFO for LGM as our reference point, but the psychic type never even got into the battle. What's particularly crazy about it is that in all of my previous attempts, we didn't even come close. That insane run from Nightwing really was imperative. In fact, Wubat and Yamask ended up taking out five of Alder's six team members. We were so far from beating the champion prior to this attempt that I'd sort of come to terms with the fact that we weren't going to be able to win this one. Anyway, we managed to beat Alder with the first six Pokemon seen in a UFO for Algium, so there's your answer. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.